Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how can you build a multi-view Angular 1.x client-side web parts with SharePoint Framework and this the topic actually touches regardless are you using Angular or React or Ember or whatever so there, there's a kind of a classic challenge on how do you do uh, the multi-view uh, transitions and how do you track the UI state within your web part uh, and we wanted to kind of have a quick talk about that one and use the Angular 1.x as a sample case, how to make this happen. There will be samples for the other libraries and, uh, and frameworks um, in our GitHub uh, as well. But let's use the Angular 1.x as an example for this webcast. My name is Vesa Yuvanen. I'm a senior program manager in SharePoint uh, Engineering. And with me today uh, from a SharePoint BMP core team is Waldek. So Waldek, will you do the intros? Yeah, sure. Hi everybody, my name is Valdek Mastikas. I am Office Development MVP. Uh, I work as a senior developer at, R at Rancor, and today I'll be your dev dude. Yes, indeed. Your title seems to be changing on every single uh, presentation. <laughs> <laughs> But let's get actually ongoing on the on the presentation. So just quickly recap, SharePoint Patterns and Practices is owned by the SharePoint Engineering, um, but we work together with community, uh, people like Waldeck, who is part of the core team, or the community who are want to contribute their knowledge uh, and their learnings for the other uh, for the others to benefit. The BMP, uh, the SharePoint BMP provides code samples, guidance documentations, community calls, uh, and the themes are around SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Adding Model, uh, which is the in-production uh, technologies, and then others will touch Microsoft Graph, Office 365 APIs, and so on. AKMS SharePoint PMP, one location to find all of the different links uh, related on SharePoint PMP. Uh, that page will be uh, reformatted, so depending on when you're watching the video, you might see the old version or the new version of the page. But anyway, let's actually get, uh, concentrate on today's topic. So it's really around the UI state handling. So how do we handle the state uh, within the client side web parts? And Waldek is going to do the demo uh, with the Angular 1.x uh, sample, which is available for you to download and play around with as well. But Technically, what we're talking is that typically when you're when you're implementing um, a classic, let's say, a single page application using Angular or React, you can use the URL to track your state. So if you're using actual uh, React routes or or the corresponding technologies in Angular, you would actually uh, use the URL to actually state or keep the state uh, of your presentation. But since in the SharePoint framework or the client-side web parts are being rendered by SharePoint, you do not have a control on the URL. And that means that we need to come up with a, a alternative solution for this uh, classic challenge. And kind of I've touched that one already. Uh, obviously, the technical solution for this one depends uh, on the library and the JavaScript framework, what you're using, together with your client-side web part. Um, we, and we will use an Angular 1.x in this example, but obviously, React has its own way of doing the UI state handling as well. And there will be a sample around that one in a GitHub, uh, or it probably is already there, available when you're watching the video. So anything you want to add, actually, on the challenge description, uh, Walbeck. Yeah, sure. So the interesting part is that when, when, when you build a spa, you own the whole page as a dev, right? So developing the spa, you own the whole page, and your application is the only thing that lives at this URL. So you can track, actually, uh, the state of your app, like which view you are looking at using the hash in URL. Now, when you build a web part, you have to take into account that the web part is added on a page, not by you, but by a user. And they can add one web part to the page, they can add two, they can add three or more. And uh, uh, the thing is that you don't know, when you build a web part, you don't know what else is on the page. And if you would use the URL to track the state of your web part, you could actually collide with other elements on the same page. So this is exactly the challenge that we have. How do you track the state where your web part is and what, what it shows, and at the same time not colliding with other elements on a page? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. So and, and that's the whole point that we are trying to uh, solve here. Yes, indeed, indeed. And really, I, I think the key scenario, like you mentioned, is that if you have multiple web parts, uh, multiple instances of the same web part in the state, uh, sorry, in the page, how do you remain the state for of all of those individual instances, which means that you cannot use the URL for that. 
um, that's not an option uh, in the implementation. So we kind of use a, a classic poll uh, scenario as our example uh, today within the demo, which Waldeck is going to uh, do. And this is available in a GitHub, like mentioned, and it kind of have tr uh, well, it has three different stage uh, or stages statuses uh, when it's presenting its UI. The number one status is the one where it's not yet configured, so the information is not there, and we and we are showing that classic. Uh, placeholder component uh, on the on the page. Is it placeholder component? Come on, Paul. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. It is. It's exactly is. You got yes. it right. <laughs> yes. So um, always, always forgetting the, the right terminology on that one. So the placeholder uh, placeholder uh, on the uh, when it's not yet uh, configured. And then uh, the second stage is that when it has been configured, you actually filled up the options. Uh, it's going to show you or the end user the individual options, which are available for answer. And then obviously, if the person has already answered the poll, it will absolutely show the, then the results uh, related on the poll uh, survey. The sample itself right now isn't really remaining the, or, or saving this these answers or the case uh, that this particular user has already replied on this poll because we wanted to really concentrate on this UI transition and show that within the sample without again additional complexity but let's not actually talk about the sample let's see it in practice because I think that always helps on, on understanding what are we actually talking about. So let's uh, move into the demo section and Waldeck is going to walk through the, the actual code and explain how the implementation has been uh, done so that the status uh, is remained on the properly for individual webpot instances. So Waldeck, take it away. All right, so in this sample we would like to show you how you can build a multi-view web parts uh, with Angular in a way that they won't collide with other, other elements on a page. So here, let me add the web part, part that, that, that we've built, which shows Paul. And then when you first add it to the page, you can imagine that there are some things that you have to set first, right? So the web part checks that and says that you have to set some things up. So for the poll title, um, for the poll that we have, let's enter uh, favorite framework. For the uh, um, optional description, let's add what is your favorite framework? Framework. And then as the name of the list, we will pick the framework poll, which is the list that we already have. So now we apply it. And now we can see another state, which is the first state that everybody from now on will see when they come to this page, which is the poll, right? So these are the answers that we have available in the list. And basically, the only thing that you can do now is vote. So here, how about we pick a framework of our choice, which in this case is Angular. We vote. And when we do, we actually move over to another state. So now we show the results. The key element here is that if you will watch the recording back and you will be able to stop and pause, you will see that the whole time the URL of this page didn't change. So we didn't affect the URL. We changed states from config state to poll state to result state, but we didn't change the URL. So if we had multiple elements, web parts, even multiple polls on the same page, one poll wouldn't affect another. So they would work um, um, on their own, and changing the state in one wouldn't change the state in any other elements on a page. So how this is done in Angular? Let's go to our code. And the key element to that is that in Angular you have the a router, but the router works basically based on a URL. So uh, to every route in your app, you uh, you can assign um, a, assign a, a path, and based on that path, Angular moves between views. Now here we use another approach, which is called UI router, which is based on state. So here in Instead of routes, we have states. And every state is similar to a route. It has a name, it has a template, it has parameters, controllers, controller S. A state could also be assigned to a URL. But that's exactly the one thing that we don't want to do because we don't know what will end up on, on this page. And with that, we don't want to have the risk that changing the URL might affect the state of some other element on the page. So with that, we just use names, 
which is which, which are here. So here are the states that we have: config, poll vote, poll results. And actually, for for the poll, we use a common parent state that we use to show t uh, uh, to show this part. So if if you see it here, uh, when we when when we look at results, we show title and the optional description. And now if I reload the page and we go back to to the poll state, we 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 show them as as well. So that is solved by having a parent state and then two child states, right? So these are the states that we have here. And then in our app, we basically, when we first add the, the web part to the page, we check if we have the name of the list, the poll list, and if we don't, we change the state to config state, and if we do have the list name, then we move to our poll.vote, where the poll dot is the parent state, so with that, we apply basically everything that's in a poll, plus everything that's in a vote. So in our app, if you look at the poll, there is the title, the description, and then there is also another view in which we apply child uh, states, which is for for here for the vote is the form with all the uh, the options, and then the result, which which is the chart. Yeah, well, like, can so, you go well, like, back yeah. on the on the if clause on that one? Just to kind of a pinpoint that right now, uh, just to clarify, this is not a production ready implementation uh, of the of the web part because right now we don't save the status or the answers anywhere. But technically, in that else clause, you would then add that logic of seeing has that particular person already replied or answered on this yes. poll, and if the person has already uh, answered, we would actually show the results, and that way totally. we would adapt this to be more production ready. But we don't actually, by, by intention, we don't want to do that, uh, because we want to keep it as simple as possible, so we, we don't add any of the additional uh, logic here. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So with, with that, you can see how you can uh, build a state-driven multi-view app part in a way that doesn't collide with other elements on the page. Um, is there anything else that you would like to ask or see, Vesa? No, I think that's pretty much some, oh, well, maybe, um, or it might be just me and I missed it. So now in the <laughs> if clause, we are saying poll.vote. Um, but how did you come up with the, the conclusion of switching that then to the results? So where was the result uh, transition? Right. So here, if, if, if we go to our vote, here, here, here we show the form. So here we have all the choices, right? And here we have the button to vote. That has assigned an, an action of vote, right? Yeah. And in this action, if we go to our controller, here we have our vote, which is here. So then we submit a new vote, and then once this is done, then we switch to results. Yeah. That's how yes. we flow between the individual, or three different individual uh, statuses or presentations of the web part. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Cool. Uh, and obviously, this example is in Angular, uh, but we can uh, do similar stuff with other frameworks as well. And there will be samples like that in the SharePoint GitHub uh, repository uh, sooner or later. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, I think that we can go back to slides and r wrap it up. That sounds good. Good. I think that covers quite nicely um, our scenario and the scenario where how do we how do we track the state of the UI for individual individual client side web part instances without colliding any with anything else on the page. Um, anything you want to add on top of um, of the demo or what we discussed, uh, Waldecker? Absolutely. So I would encourage everyone to check out the sample um, on, um, on your own because whenever you will try to build a web part that have more than one view in Angular or in other framework, you will have to deal with it as well. So sample is a great way to show you one approach that you can use typically um, in Angular and we will have another samples as, as well um, uh, that illustrates how you can deal with this this um, challenge. So I would hi hi highly encourage you to check it out, give it a try, and if there's anything else that you don't, don't understand or you would like to ask, reach out to us. 
Absolutely. And the easiest way, by the way, uh, just to repeat on kind of a clarifying that as well, easiest way to reach out is, is also using the GitHub issue lists uh, where the samples are located. So feel free to open up an issue and we'll, we'll follow up on the, on the question or use the tech community. Uh, the SharePoint developer section and we'll follow up on on your uh, question. But thanks for watching and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Bye.